So the Tibetans have this great saying that desire puts feathers on things. It makes things look prettier than they really are. And if we were to update that for the 21st century, we could say that dopamine puts feathers on things. It makes things look prettier than they really are. And we can see this when, uh, when we're doing like a big purchase, like a house, uh, and then we're, we're going with the realtor to look at houses. And of course, the first house they always show us is out of our price range, right? It's just a little bit more than what you said you were willing to spend, but let's just go take a look at this house first, right? So you go to the house and of course it's great. It's an amazing house because it's, it's higher than what you were expecting. You were expecting something in your price range. So the house is amazing. The house is great. And, and, and as you're looking around the house and you're going, wow, this place is so fantastic. You know, the dopamine starts going, you're getting the spritzes. And of course, big spritzes, because this is a big house. This is a big purchase. And as you're telling yourself how amazing this house is and how great this house is, you're like, I've got to have this house. I know I can't afford it, but what can I do to get this house, right? Because the, the, uh, the dopamine now, it's not just the wanting, it's the clinging. It's, I've got to have it. And so then we start, uh, we start negotiating like, okay, well, I'll, I'll give up Starbucks. I'll give up uh, my gym membership. I'll give up shopping. I'll, go, I'll give up going on holidays for a few years because I have to have this house. It, because it's not just that I think that the house is going to make me happy. I think that the house is going to fundamentally transform who I am. That I will no longer have worries or fears or stress or problems anymore. That's how, uh, that's how great we think the house is. We impute these qualities on the house that simply don't exist but we fool ourselves into believing it, right? And then we get the house and of course it's great, right? We have the house and uh, we have the big housewarming party and everyone comes over and tells us how great the house is and we're feeling really good about it. And that's wonderful, but it just takes a few months before the, that excited feeling wears off from the house. We still like the house, right? We still uh, appreciate the house, the beauty of the house, but it no longer gives us that excited feeling anymore. And now we're back to our old, our old self and we have problems again and we have stress and we have worries and we have fears and, and maybe you want to go have Starbucks now, but you can't do it because you had to give up Starbucks and you can't go to the gym. You can't do some retail therapy, right? Because you've, you've told yourself you would give up all these things in order to have the house. And so the house becomes a prison to us at that point because we can't do anything else because we said at that moment before, we, that it was the only thing we needed. We would never want for anything else again. And we know that's just not true. This is how you can walk into a closet full of clothes and say, I have nothing to wear. There's nothing here that I would want to wear, right? And every one of those items at one point had feathers on it. If you look on the floor of the closet, that's where all the feathers are now. And if you go down into your garage and then you look at all the junk and you're like, where did all this stuff come from? Who bought all this stuff? It's like we did because we put feathers on everything, right? The, the old ab machine sitting in the corner. And it's like, it's not that, it's not that the ab machine is so great. It, it's, it, I mean, maybe technology makes it marginally better each year, but it's that it was new right? All of these things, we get them. We think, oh, this is it. This is the ab machine. This is the one that's going to give me the six pack abs. But then a few days later, after the, the newness and excitement of the ab machine wears off, it just glow, goes in the garage like everything else. And then we end up having a garage sale. We, we maybe get two or three cents on the dollar back from all of our purchases. And then we just fill it up again. We just repeat the whole cycle again, never questioning why do we keep doing this? Because we're, we're trying to fill this hole up inside of us, this sense of lack. We're trying to fill it with material items that we think will bring us happiness, will bring us satisfaction, but they never do. So this is also why I had recommended at the, in the first class not to start meditating every day because it's the same thing. In the beginning, you buy the course and you're all excited and oh, I'm going to be a meditator now and I'm going to start meditating every day and I'm going to be so peaceful and happy and, and you will. But in the beginning, 
there's all that excitement around it. There's all the dopamine. And that just doesn't give us the follow through that we need for something like this, for something that's a more longer term reward. So this is why I just want you to keep coming each week to, to each class to understand more about your mind, understand your brain and why we're doing these things, how we keep getting caught in these cycles of dissatisfaction. 